Good morning, all, and we um, thank you all for joining our first On Point Weekly Laser Training Session. So I give you guys, a, everyone out there, a bit of a broad brush on how to um, take a bit of the technical way of how to sell the right laser with the right application. So we're going to take a bit of the, through this course over the next five to six weeks, we want to take away some of the technical part of the laser and bring in some practical. So with me today is Nigel and I'm, I'm Carl. If you probably met us in the stores before, if not, well, welcome. And um, we look forward to giving you guys a bit more confidence in this category in your in your stores and moving forward. So we'll get started. Yeah, okay, so week one, we're just gonna, is basically going to be a bit of an overview of the coming weeks. We'll touch on that, how the whole webinar series is going to proceed what we're going to dive into and um, and we'll get a bit of an understanding of lasers. And so this, today we'll go over the line laser and rotating laser in a, quite broadly so we can just touch on the differences, the main differences between the two. And the other point we want to make this week is um, we want to discuss the green beam myth. So we'd like to get that a bit of clarity around the green beam situation. So we'll move on and hopefully we can um, make as interactive as possible. All right, so briefly on, on the coming weeks. So today, as Nigel just said, it's more just in regards to the main differences between rotary laser and line lasers. Um, and then moving on, we'll start next week going into depth with the line lasers. So as to how to use them, how to turn them on, the warranties, all the rest of it. And then what ideally matching the best trade for the best product for its functionality. So. We'll do that and go through to the rotary lasers and we'll finish that in about five to six weeks. So if you want to join us for each one, each one of these meetings is recorded and will be put on. So you'll have it to go back to. So little, a good quote here from Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I'll learn. So we want everyone to get involved today. There's a Q&A box. Please put any questions you've got in the, it doesn't matter, any question's a good question. Pop it in the box. We'll, we'll, um, envisage to hopefully give you an answer as we go along. Some questions might come in that we might answer when we go into more depth on the products. So feel free to ask anything, it's good. And it's gonna make it fun. So we'll have a, have a little fun along the way, so. So yeah, there's two main types of lasers. So there's line lasers and rotating lasers. Now that, most people probably know this. Um, but so with a line laser, they're a fixed beam laser with a very bright and fine beam. So brighter and finer than a rotating laser generally. Um, and they're predominantly in internal use. So they're for internal trades. So um, electricians, tilers, carpentry, um, kitchen makers, all the internal trades is where a line laser is ideal situated. For square set outs, um, horizontal vertical beams that can be used simultaneously. And they're a small compact unit. So the main, the main things to remember with the line laser is predominantly internal use and they have a very fine, crisp beam, finer than a rotating laser. So yeah. any questions you have on that though, please put them in the question and answers and hopefully we can make sure everyone's got proper clarity. So with a rotating laser, um, obviously it's a single laser diode using a rotary laser, so it's a spinning beam. Now, predominantly used outside, so basically for any more your external trades, you get a better accuracy than a line laser over a greater distance, and you get a longer distance with the receiver, so in some cases up to sort of 500, 600 metres from the laser, depending on what unit you have. So they come with an array of different um, functionalities, which we'll go into as we go along as to which models do what and why the functions are used. And so basically, so ideal for your sites out, your concreters, plumbing, drainage, landscapers, earth movers, what type of thing. So again, if you've got questions on that, we will cover off on how the warranty works and all the batteries and all that as we go along. So give you a bit more things. So it's just a bit of a broad brush today, but put the questions in because it's something we can carry forward in the coming weeks. So, so the green beam myth, we want to bust it because I'm sure everyone's been asked and people probably wonder a lot, we get asked a lot here, um, is green beam more visible outside? So is it better to use a green beam outside? Well really the answer is no. Um, not, not to say that a green beam can't be used outdoors, but 
once the sun, the human eye picks up green four to five times better than red. As you can see in the little graph down in the bottom of the screen, that's the human eye, what we, the colours we pick up. The, um, but when you're outdoors in direct sunlight, the beam is dispersed by the direct sunlight, so, which means you can only pick the laser up with the detector. So, yes, you can use it outdoors, but you're not going to get the advantage. You not, won't visibly see it unless you're under a sheltered area, like a pergola or a, um, under an eave of a building against a building. So the ideal situation for a green boom is internally with brighter areas, um, bigger, larger areas, larger internal areas. Um, that's where you'll get the crisp, visible beam. Whereas a red beam, sometimes you'll lose the beam even inside and you will have to use it with a, with a detector. So hopefully that helps. Please, put, again, put your questions in there because we want to make this as clear as possible. All right. So, um, questions. We've had a couple of questions come in. Um, we've got one here. Um, what tripod can be used at a rotating laser? So it's something we'll cover off when we cover off on the rotary lasers, but they usually use a flat top tripod on a rotary laser because it's automatically leveled, but we'll go into that later, won't we? That's a good question to carry forward, that one there. One, one thing about that with the tripod is most tripods are a universal tripod. So there's universal threads, which is just a 5.8 thread is the larger thread, which you'll see underneath the rotating laser. And a lot of the line lasers are small, they're a six mil thread, um, but they are universal, Depend, it doesn't matter what laser it is. So you don't have to have an IMAX tripod for an IMAX laser. If, if not, if needs be, you can have that different. That's good. Um, another question has just come in regards to going back to this, um, the green and the red. Is the green any hard, um, more, is it harder on my eyes? Well, to answer, to answer that question there, what it is, is we use a class two laser in all of, all of our lasers, which is generally what your construction, so like the blink of the eye is like, it's like looking at the sun, will help you with that. So what we say is with a class two, the red is no, is no less harder on the eyes than the green, but again, if you put it in, the, in terms we can all understand, it's like staring at the sun. So just make sure you keep your, um, just, Common sense, don't stare into it, but it's not going to actually have any harder, um, any more effect. That's hope that answers that question a bit. We'll, it'll, it'll become clearer as we go along, too. So, yeah, yeah. It's good. yeah. There's another one there that's a, it's good to get those questions about green booms because it is always a bit of a funny one. Does green boom cost more than red booms? Well, yes, they do. Um, the main reason for that is a good question. The main reason for that is that you think of what a green, a red diode is using, not red laser. So all the scanners you have in the stores, anything like that, they're using the same technology. So it's a lot more mass produced. With a green, though, it's a lot more. Now there's a difference between in the green. We'll explain as well. We'll probably extend this question a little bit. So we use um, manufactured green diodes. They're not a red beam filtered. Through, to become grown, so it is grown. So a lot, there's a lot less produced in the world. But as we find now, we're already seeing it that green's becoming so much more popular, especially in the line lasers for the internal use. We believe in a few years' time, we probably won't be many reds left there because, and it's when that happens more, it's going to bring that cost down to get it right. So I hope that answers the question there on that. So there's another good question there, Ben. That's great. Um, Green beam receivers, will they work with red beam lasers and vice versa? It's another one we get a lot, um, hence the reason with our new rotary laser model we went to a neutral band pickup, so they can pick up red or green. Because generally speaking, a green beam laser would have to be used with a green beam receiver, so it'll have a green pickup, whereas in a red beam will have to be used with a red beam laser. So especially in the line lasers, in the receivers for the line lasers, we do have a green beam version and a red beam version and they can't work. You can't use a green beam detector with a red beam laser. It won't pick up. And there is times we've had it where people will ring up and say their, laser, their receiver's not picking up their laser and it's brand new. Um, you do find out they've got a red beam receiver with it, not a green beam. So that's a good question and good thing to um, make sure everyone on here is aware of that. To um, just add to that question, one is that comes up quite a lot. 
it's now that I've, a lot of trades might might have more than one laser in their in their kit in their in their um, trailer or toolbox. Is that can I use my rotary laser receiver with my line laser? They are both green or they are both red, whatever it is. No, they can't. They use a different frequency. So a line laser receiver won't pick up a rotary laser, and vice versa. Vice versa, a rotary laser receiver won't pick up a line laser. So just make sure that's clear. So some guys say, oh, I can use my 3DG outside. That's fantastic, but not with his receiver from his other laser. So just make sure that's a little bit clear. But we'll cover it again a bit more deep as we go along. So, yeah. So right. any more questions come? Have you got any, have we, anyone, anyone else got any more questions? As we said, it doesn't matter what, how you might think it's unintelligent. Any, every question is a good one because we might be helping someone else here on, on the call today. So if you do have other questions you think of after this um, that might relate to this week, just put him in for next week's um, Q and A, and we'll be happy to yeah. happy to answer them then. As well. some more clarity on each laser and what and everything, whatever what each laser does. So we'll um, someone just asked there, what will we cover in the next session? We will have that in the email as we're coming in. We'll start. We're going to start off with the um, the line lasers next week. So just so you, you're ready, if you've got even got the product in store and you'd like to have it so you can actually touch and feel it, we will have them here to play with as well. So we'll cover off on the LX11P range, the LX22 um, range in both red and green, and the LX25P range, which is a cross line five dot. Um, the big one, which is the most trendiest there is out there at the moment, is the 3D style, which I've got one here. We'll have that as a standalone one because there's a fair bit we can go in on that. So. That's what we're doing next in the next two weeks, and then we'll start to move on to the rotary lasers. So, but other okay. than that, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yep, and thank you. Have a great day and a great weekend, and thanks for taking the time. So, really appreciate it. I hope you guys have got some little takeaways that'll make you a bit more confident this week coming. We'll see you next week.